All right, so now we're going to talk about counting with permutations and combinations. Uh, objective, Buckingham students will be able to use the counting principle and permutations to solve problems involving counting with permutations and combinations. All right. So <clears throat> the counting principle is basically this. Um, you know, you got some possible, uh, this is kind of the formal language of it, but you got some event, and let's say there's like multiple parts or multiple stages of this event. Um, if in the first stage you have, let's say, like two outcomes, two possibilities, and the third one you have three, and then maybe the last one you have four, well, the number of possible outcomes altogether would be each stage multiplied together, the, the number of possible outcomes in each stage. So it would be like two times three times four. And you could read through this on your own, but basically we just get this basic idea. You could just multiply all the possible outcomes from each stage together until you get to the very end. The end k here just represents, you know, whatever the last stage is, because there could be two stages, there could be... 50 stages, who knows. So, <clears throat> take a look at this. Suppose you are a at a flower shop that sells four types of flowers, roses, tulips, sunflowers, and daisies. And I'm gonna just kinda hum underline this, roses, tulips, sunflowers, and daisies. And uh, he also has three kinds of pots. He has brown pots, yellow pots, and green pots. How many different types of pot flower arrangements can you have if you only put one flower type in one pot color? Okay. So this is really two stages. Our, sta our stage one is flowers. Our stage two is pots, okay? So we got to think about that. So how many different combinations do we have in the first stage and how many do we have in the second stage? Well, it's actually a pretty easy math problem. But I want to show you is just a kind of a way of visualizing this. You won't do this every time, but this just kind of shows you a way that you could visualize this. So we know that we start off with roses and then we start off, and then we have tulips, sunflowers, and daisies. And for each rose, you could have brown, yellow, or green. And for each tulip, you could have a brown, yellow, or green pot. And for each sunflower, you could have a brown, yellow, or green pot. And for each daisy, you could have a brown, yellow, or green pot. And now you could just simply see, okay, well I have three, 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 you add that all up, you'd have twelve. Well, the really simple thing to do here is to recognize, well, we had four options in stage one. Multiply that by the three options we had in stage two, and you get 12. And so that's the number of arrangements that you could have. It's just the simple counting principle of, of multiplying each stage together. All there is to it. So, practice one. Suppose you just won a contest for a new car. You have some options as to what you could pick for your new car. You have the choice between two engine types, a four-cylinder or a six-cylinder. You also have a choice of four different colors, red, blue, green, or white. I'm going to highlight these for you. So you got four cylinder or six, and you got red, blue, green, or white. How many different combinations of engine types and colors, or and color, do you have to choose from? All right, I'll let you guys work this out on your own. Um, if it helps you make a tree diagram, do it. Or maybe you could just see the simple counting principle here at work. Go ahead and give it a try and check back when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so you got your four cylinder, you got your two cylinder option. For the, for the four cylinder, you have red, blue, green, or white. And for the two cylinder, you also have red, blue, green, or white, which gives you four and four or eight. And of course, you could just take your two options in stage one, multiply it by your four options in stage two, and you get eight. And so that's, that's really all there is to it. All right, let's go to the next page. All right, now when a group or objects, a group of objects or people, if they have to be arranged in a certain order, a certain order of order matters now. That arrangement is now called a permutation. So permutation has to do with order. Uh, um, a way that you might be able to re remember this is that O is right next to P in the alphabet. So when you have something where order matters, uh, it's, P comes right after O in the alphabet, so it's permutation. Okay. The other word that we're going to learn is combination, and so that's nowhere near uh, O in the alphabet. This is a little easy way to try and remember that. And to calculate permutations, we have this basic formula here, where n is your number of objects, so number of objects, and r is your number of spaces available, or places where you could put that object. So uh, an example here is, you know, you have, you know, 10 shirts to choose from, but you only have one body, right? So you're just putting one shirt on. So that we would call that uh, 10 with a permutation of 1. 10 permutation 1 is how we'd say that. And these, this notation here, just so you know, 
This is kind of like the computer language for how do you calculate permutations. And this is uh, just kind of how we like write it in math language. But you're going to see uh, calculator programs that are able to do either one of these. Um, and so we'll, we'll learn that later on. But this, this is something that um, this is kind of notation for doing a permutation. And this is the formula. And you'll notice there's something weird in this formula. It's got this exclamation mark. And, and you're probably like, well, what does that mean? And so let's talk about that. So that, that is the factorial symbol, factorial. And, and all that means is that you just multiply down to 1 of whatever that number is. So, for example, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? Or 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. And, and technically, you don't really need to multiply by 1, right? Because that doesn't really change anything. So you could really just multiply down to 2. And something interesting about this is, is that 5 factorial is actually equal to 5 times 4 factorial, if you think about it. And if I was to say, like, uh, 10 factorial, well, that's really equal to 10 times 9 factorial, which is also equal to 10 times 9 times 8 factorial, and so on, right? You could keep doing this pattern. So you can expand factorials pretty easily just by counting down. And that little skill, that's going to be useful here in just a second. You'll see. Okay, so we got our formula. Let's go ahead and put it to use here in example two. It says there are 10 finalists in a figure snowboarding competition. Uh, I, I don't know what that is, but okay, let's say it is something. Figure snowboarding competition. How many ways can gold, silver, and bronze medals be awarded? All right, well, that means that we have 10 people. So that's, that's our number of, of people, our number of objects is 10. So we could go ahead and just say that N equals 10. And our number of, of places or spaces available, if we just are doing a, a gold, silver, and bronze, well, then we only have three. So that would mean that our R value here is three. So let's plug this into the formula. We would write this as 10 permutation three equals 10 factorial over 10 minus three factorial. Okay. Um, well, let's think about this for a second. 10 factorial is really like 10 times 9. Well, l let me do this first. Let me just say that this is really 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 is 7 factorial, okay? So 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. And on the bottom, I have a 7 factorial. Well, look at this. Isn't, don't these just cancel each other out? I mean, 7 factorial divided by 7 factorial, that must just be 1. So I'm really left with 10 times 9 times 8. Well, 10 times 9 times 8, pretty easy to do. That's 720. And bam, we know how many ways you could fit those 10 finalists um, into first, second, and third, or gold, silver, and bronze medals. So not too, not too tricky. Um, I got another practice problem here for you. It says a club of nine people, nine people now, uh, wants to choose a board of three officers. Okay, so it looks like we have three places again. You got president, vice president, and secretary. How many ways are there to choose the board from the nine people, assuming that no one has more than one job, right? So nobody's going to be president and vice president or president and secretary. Everybody's, there's a, everybody has just one job. Okay, I want you to go ahead and give that a shot, uh, and then just check back when you're ready to check your work. All right, so this one had nine people with three spots, so that's nine permutations with three, so that's nine factorial over nine minus three, which is nine over six, so I just expanded the nine, eight, seven, six factorial, and that cancels out with the bottom, and I have 504. Pretty easy stuff. All right, on this page, an arrangement or selection of objects in which order is not important, that is called a combination. All right, and so this, again, this is when order doesn't matter, and notice it looks a lot like the permutation formula, except for now you're just dividing by the number of spaces um, factorial. So you're just you're just thinking like, okay, but now it doesn't really matter if it's an order. So you're this gives you um, a, a lot more possibilities. So we're just you just the only difference is you just divide by r factorial. Otherwise, these two equations are the same. So let's go ahead and do it. A group of seven students. Working on a project, seven seems like it's going to be important. Working on a project, need to two, choose two from their group, okay, two, to present the group's report to the class. How many ways can they choose the two students? All right, so our number of uh, people here is seven. 
number of spaces is two. Um, we could tell order doesn't matter because it doesn't matter, you know, which order these two get put in, right? There's no first, second, or third here. It's just two people are going to present. It doesn't matter who's first or who's second. So this we would write as seven choose two is kind of the language we use there. And so this is seven factorial over seven minus two factorial, and then just times two factorial. All right, so let's let's play with this a little bit. That means this is like seven factorial over five factorial and two factorial. So that's kind of nice. You can see that these things, uh, these two numbers are going to add up to that one. So seven factorial is really seven times six times five factorial. And you notice I'm stopping at five because I already have a five factorial down here. And two factorial, really, two factorial is really just two if you think about it because it's just two times one. And so five factorials cancel out. And you can take a two out of this, give you a three, and that would give you a one. So really you just have a one on the bottom. So all you're really worried about here is the seven times the three. And so that makes this a lot easier, or pretty easy to calculate at least. We got 21. All right. Um, this next question is, is definitely a little bit tricky, so I'm going to start you guys off with it. It says, five cards are drawn from a standard deck of cards. How many ways could you draw a hand that consists of three clubs and two diamonds? All right. At first glance, it seems like the five and the standard deck is going to be important. But it's really not right now, because we're not asking you about probability or anything like that. We're just asking ways that we could draw three clubs and two diamonds. So really, this doesn't matter. I mean, the standard deck kind of matters because we have to know how many clubs there are and how many diamonds there are, but that's all it really matters for. And if we use the counting principle, we could think of this as the number of ways of three clubs multiplied by the number of ways of two of diamonds or two diamonds, sorry. Um, and so let's think about that. Well, if I wanted to get three clubs, or I want to know how many ways I could get three clubs, how many clubs are there? Well, there's, there's 13. So this should be 13 choose three, and this should be 13 choose two. And we're just gonna multiply these two things together. So let's work this out. This would look like, uh, I'm gonna zoom in so I have more space to write. 13 factorial over, remember the bottom number is just going to be 13 minus 3, which is 10 factorial. And then this would be 3 factorial. And then we're going to times this by uh, 13 choose 2, which would be 13 factorial again, over, now 13 minus 2 is 11 factorial, and then now that would be 2 factorial. Okay, and let's think about what this really is. This is really like saying 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 factorial over, we got another 10 factorial, and three, three factorial is just really like three times two. And then we could, the next thing we would be 13 times 12 times 11 factorial over 11 factorial, and that's really just times two. So we got these guys to cancel out, we got these guys to cancel out. And if you think about it, 3 times 2, right here, that's really just 6, and 6 goes into 12, so you could take a 6 out of that and give you a 2, and then just cancel that out. Here you could take a 2 out of 12 and 2, so that would be 6. So really all you're calculating here is 13, 13 times 2 times 13 times 6. Everything else canceled out. Oh, n times 11. I almost forgot about that 11. So 13 times 2 times 11 times 13 times 6. Let's actually write that so we can think about what, what we're going to do here. Well, I mean, you just plug all that in your calculator, and you're going to get 22,308. Pretty crazy that, you know, a five-card hand like that with three clubs and two diamonds, there's 22,000 ways that you could hit, you get the same hand. So pretty cool. All right. Last thing here for the summary, I want you to write your own problem where you, uh, I want you to create one permutation problem and one combination problem, meaning that I want you to give me, think of a scenario or a word problem for each, one where order matters and one where order doesn't matter. All right, I'll see you guys on the next video.